let's talk a little bit about enveloped viruses. Enveloped viruses acquire their envelope in general, their membrane. This is not true of, of all enveloped viruses, but true of almost all of them. By budding out of the cell, either out of the cell surface or into an intracellular um, compartment, such as the endoplasmic reticulum or the Golgi uh, apparatus, and then being transported out, uh, and in that budding process, wrap themselves, if you wish, in a membrane that's derived from host cell lipids, although host cell proteins are in, generally exclu in general excluded. Some of the smaller envelope viruses have icosahedral symmetry, and their structure and assembly is determined by regular interactions within an icosahedral shell, just as the ones you've seen in the non-envelope viruses. But large and le larger and less regular en envelope viruses are also um, seen, such as HIV or influenza, in which the protein interactions are less perfect, but that doesn't matter for protecting the nucleic acid nearly so much because the lipid bilayer, in effect, is an impermeable barrier against agents that might get in and degrade or damage um, or cleave the, um, the nucleic acid. So um, the budding process that I mentioned can either involve, as in the case of the so-called alpha viruses, of which um, Sindbis virus is one of the prototypes and well-studied, and a recent outbreak, human outbreak of an alpha virus uh, is the chikungunya virus, which has um, had a, a major outbreak in, in the French island of Réunion and led to considerable interest and publicity about, about the properties of that virus. The alpha viruses uh, have a core that preassembles in the cytoplasm and then two species of glycoprotein that are synthesized on the rough ER, exported to the cell surface, and then the particle buds out through a process by which the uh, inward uh, directed C-terminal tips of the glycoprotein, which stick through the membrane in a single alpha helical segment. You might remember very early on, I showed you a cross section that showed that. Interact one to one with the, um, the icosahedrally symmetric core that's assembled rather like a, um, like a non-envelope virus in the cytoplasm and, and buds out. In other cases, such as influenza, the, there's no pre-assembled inner particle, but rather the assembly occurs at the membrane, as you see here, where the inner structures and the, um, and the glycoproteins that incorporate in the membrane come together as part of the elaborate budding event. Separate cellular machinery, in some cases, is then needed to finish the pinching off, whereas these viruses don't seem to need a separate pinching off mechanism. In the case of HIV, these micrographs show particularly dramatic examples of HIV budding. It's directed in this case uh, by the interaction of the N-terminal domain of the inner protein, the so-called GAG gene product, and uh, the, that protein uh, has a meristoyl group at its N-terminus and a very um, positively charged surface and interacts with the membrane to drive budding as shown here. In these micrographs, you can see that the HIV particle is rather sparsely uh, decorated with an envelope glycoprotein that has the function of attaching the virus particle to a new host cell and mediating viral entry. In the case of the smaller icosahedrally symmetric envelope viruses, like dengue virus, for example, 
The outer coat is much more tightly packed. It forms a very regular array, in this case with 180 subunits of the protein whose structure is shown up here, forming a perfect icosahedral array. And it is assembly of that array that drives particle budding. 